Dr. Ramamurthy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me here of today. Of course. Tell me a little bit about the exciting work you're doing at the FDA. Um, Sure. Um, I, I come from a group that's called Genomics and Targeted Therapy Group, which is within the Office of Clinical Pharmacology at FDA. Uh, what our group does is looks at biomarker data that are submitted to us by the pharmaceutical or biotech companies. Mm -hmm. So they submit to us uh, under a mechanism called IND, or Investigational New uh, a drug application, and when they are ready to submit it as a final data set, it's called NDA or BLA. So we look at the biomarker information in those applications and uh, determine if uh, the biomarker has a role in the safe and effective use of the drug. Okay, uh, so a little bit of alphabet soup. So for everyone, what does that mean when you say a biomarker? What does that mean to, to the layperson? Um, so biomarker is something, that's not how a patient feels function to survive. It's more uh, part of the normal pathological process or physiological process. So uh, our response to a drug when a patient is treated with a drug does uh, something in the body change. It doesn't have to be necessarily genetic. It could be proteomic, it could be RNA, or it could be even other kinds of biomarkers. So when somebody is treated with a drug, mm -hmm. Uh, does the expression of that biomarker or that entity change? And can we use that to better predict response? Um, say it could be even toxic effects if somebody is going to develop a, a specific adverse event, mm. if, because based on their genetic makeup, they shouldn't be getting this drug, but they do actually get the drug. So I can see. we predict these things? And are all drug manufacturers required to submit this type of information to the FDA? Um, it, it's if it is studied that way, then we would require to see the information. Uh, but if, um, for uh, things have changed in the past several years. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, it wasn't a main part of the drug development program. But uh, these years, um, say if it's oncology, um, about half the programs have studied biomarkers. They are in fact so targeted that. Uh, it becomes necessary for them to study the biomarker. Mm -hmm. The same applies for rare diseases um, as well, uh, but not. it hasn't quite permeated into the common chronic diseases. There are some other biomarkers like HbA1c or blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Those are studied. When that studied, that data would be submitted as a part of the drug application. Okay, and you have some interesting uh, educational opportunities available. Do you want to tell me a little bit about those? Oh, sure. Uh, I'd love to share that. Um, FDA has a lot of opportunities for folks at different stages of their career, whether it's a high school student or uh, an undergraduate. If they're willing, uh, if they're looking to explore. Uh, if science is a career path for them, there are opportunities like summer programs where uh, the high school student or an undergraduate could come and spend a chunk of time uh, during the summer to see if that's really a fit for them. And it, that's not necessarily regulatory science interest, mm -hmm. but then just general interest in science. Uh, for graduate student, be it a PhD student or a medical student or even a pharmacy student, um, they have opportunities to come and do rotations at the FDA. Um, at a given time, I think there were probably hundreds of students who are at the different centers at FDA, and they have different time commitments. It could be as uh, low as like one month, or it could be as many as four months, the entire summer that they could spend there. And for postgraduates, there are a number of fellowship opportunities. Uh, there are two main mechanisms. One is called ORISE. Again, it's a very generic uh, term uh, that gets thrown about. But under this mechanism, uh, people could come and spend maybe a year to up to three, four years uh, doing a specific postdoctoral uh, research program, just like in academia, with a specific mentor or mentors. And that's how I came into FDA first. Uh, I started as an ORIS fellow with two uh, mentors and then transitioned full time mm -hmm. with one of them. And uh, there is a second mechanism, which is called Commissioner's Fellowship Program. And that's a very competitive program. There are like 12 students who come in every year. But what that program also does is it allows for a didactic component. So they spend a, uh, about one year's worth of time learning about different um, centers within FDA as to how they work. Um, so when they are done on top of the research work, mm -hmm. and they also take courses on epidemiology to clinical trials to everything else. And so when they're done, they're considered ready to be employed, mm -hmm. whether it's FDA or outside. Fascinating. Um, our current president has spoken a lot about kind of deregulating the FDA or relaxing regulations on pharmaceuticals. How has that impacted your work? 
Um, uh, we've had a lot of conversations uh, that is ongoing. I think it will slow, uh, trickle down uh, slowly. We have a new commissioner who came in, uh, who joined a, a few weeks ago. So all of these conversations are ongoing. Uh, I, it would be a while before it impacts, but there are some procedural changes that are already in place. Um, it's not so much the deregulation, but then making regulation faster and easier. Some of these on, uh, conversations are already ongoing and they will continue to happen. So an exciting time to be at the FDA then. Certainly. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Sure. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. <laughs>